Welcome to Moments with Marianne. I'm so delighted we're spending this time here today. We have a very empowering show coming right up with special guest, Jesse on Nichols George. And she's here today to share with us her new book, The Code Journey. Now, Jesse Ahn, otherwise known as Ahn, is a code interpreter who has authored six books and is a collaborator on the international multi-bestseller, Embraced by the Divine, The Emerging Woman's Gateway to Power, Passion, and Purpose. Her work is founded on the principles of compassion and how to use it to bring joy in all areas of your life so you can live your passion and manifest a life filled with joy and fulfillment. On is a 13-generation spiritual healer, energy tuner, life, relationship, spiritual, and wellness coach, holistic and natural lifestyle advisor. On is also a 13th generation juridic practitioner, honoring and appreciating the harmony of all things. So let's welcome to the show, On. Thank you, Marianne. It is such a great gift to be here on your show. I really oh. am excited about sharing today. Oh, well, I am so delighted that we get to do this. My goodness, we've been connected forever, you know, on social media. And so now we get to be connected in even a more impactful way. Most definitely. And it's, you know, it's one of those things that I think when you have those connections going on online and you're building these relationships, and then when you actually get to talk to somebody, and you actually get to meet them in person, then it's this whole new duck that you open up and this whole new excitement that's there. Well, I would agree. I mean, it's been such a joy to watch the wonderful things and inspirational things that you're posting. It's really helping people along their journey. And so I have to ask you, what started you down this path? You know, it, it really came down to a tough journey that I was going through, um, at a time, and and I should explain a little bit, and I don't want to give away the whole story so people can read the whole story mm-hmm. <laughs> in the book, but basically, I came in as on as a walk-in um, more recently, and it was Jesse and Orly that started this journey, and when I say that, that sounds kind of strange to some people. I know that, um, thinking that, well, aren't you Jesse? Well, yes, the physical body is, but I've had a shift in energy um, in what is directing the physical body. So, um, again, that's a story that the whole story is in the book for people to unfold. But it it started as this sort of love story journey, not even knowing it was going to open up and become what it has become along the way. And uh, Jesse was doing some prayer work along a creek uh, in southern Utah, which is where she connected with this cat which became known as Orly, and um, they were definitely one soul, so to say, and she rescued Orly from going over a waterfall, and in that process, they ended up having to face a lot of family situations, a lot of dynamics that were going on, and making a very tough choice with her mom getting on, being older in years and having to choose about going on the road and leaving the house that she was in. And and this journey took them around the country. Um, they spent several months traveling the country. And eventually, Orly, she found out, was a much older cat than she thought. And uh, Orly's health gave out along the way in the road. And it was during that process of grief, and I think a lot of us can relate to that, that when we start grieving, we start remembering all of the experiences that we've had with somebody or something in our life. And it was through that time of reflection that she realized that Orly was teaching her. Orly was from our home, <laughs> um, far out of this, this area, and Orly was helping her remember that love Orly was helping her remember a language which we refer to as the codes and that opened this door to understanding this level of understanding this level of it was a tool really that she was given um, along the way to help her maneuver in the world that came as a gift of love basically from Orly so um, it was realizing and looking back on all of these ex- 
experiences that she started putting together these pieces. And um, both of us, we work in this dimension of using over 50 different modalities, none of them used in the traditional way. So we use, for example, numerology in the work, but we don't necessarily use it in the traditional way that numerologists would use it. It just becomes a launching point. And so it it opened this whole new way of understanding the world and the flow. And that's kind of where it came about from. So it was a journey. It was a personal journey, a journey of love, a journey of experience. Well, and it's so interesting when we talk about our own personal journey, just how different it is and how it can be so profound. You had mentioned uh, a walk-in. I'd love for you to explain what that is for our listeners that might be new to that. Absolutely. And it is one of those things that we are probably going to be seeing more of on this earth because of the lifespan that we have as humans is growing longer and longer and longer. And the intensity of our times right now is requiring us to almost give give breaks, you know. And the walk-in aspect is really a soul that steps into a life. And it can step in and assist um, a, a soul who needs to get out of a body for whatever reason um, at that point. And so Jesse was under some very extreme circumstances and it was a safety factor for her to need to get out of this human body. And so I came and I actually coexisted and that's kind of a rare opportunity to be able to coexist with another soul and a body and learn to function the way she was functioning. So it would be a very transparent change um, in there. So I actually then stepped in once she released from the body and um, and came in and, and followed through. So it's actually like an exchange of souls that goes on as a walk-in. Mm-hmm. So during this process, how did you become a code interpreter? So the coding interpreter, um, as I mentioned, it kind of evolved from this journey. Mm-hmm. And in the process of that, it was, it was trying to grasp these terms of what do we call this? <laughs> you know, what a, what a, what term do we give to this aspect? And um, what Jesse had originally decided was coding interpreter, which I think is really a good way of explaining it in many ways because codes are kind of like their own language. They're um, they're something that uses something else in a way to to show itself. So like we use letters here, we use words here, um, and different things like that. And within each letter and word is a story, so to say. So becoming a coding interpreter was about looking to these journeys that went on between Orly and Jesse. And learning to take this language that was kind of this non-tangible language in a way and putting it into something tangible. So it was this interpretation that was going on between the way we see the world as humans through our human mind and between the knowledge of the soul. And so it was, that's how the coding interpreter aspect came up and it was really an aspect of deciphering this information and then translating it back out into a way that was understandable to communicate it. And that makes sense. I mean, in your book, The Code Journey, I mean, it gives people a daily resource for kind of what to expect, what to focus on while we're here on Earth. This guide has been, I've had so many people come to me and go, this is the tool I've been waiting for. (laughs) And it's really a cool tool in that way, because I kind of like to say, you know, this is a cross between Sidney Omar and and Sarah Band Brethnick's work, (laughs) Mm -hmm. where you've got this daily guide, but it's not just 
say you're the victim of some planetary influences that are going on, it gives people a great opportunity to work in this multidimensional way. It gives them an opportunity to say, oh yeah, what's happening for me right now seems to really connect with the the influences of the month or the influences of the day or the angel influences that are in there and what's happening with that. So in one hand, we're simultaneously connecting with all of these different pieces. And then in another hand, we might be really honing in on certain pieces or certain aspects that might be surfacing more for us personally. And the daily guidebook, what I I learned is that Really, we're not going to get out of every challenge. I mean, even when we're living in our most abundant self and our greatest flow, there's still going to be, because we're in a human body, some challenges that come up. Our global influences are still going to have some challenges that are going to arise in our day-to-day life of living here on Earth. And so the real key comes down to how are we going to maneuver around those influences? How are we going to work with them? What can we do with them? And I think that's where the real power piece comes in. And one of the things people have often said about this is that, oh my gosh, this really helped me stay out of a negative situation. You know, ordinarily I would react and I felt myself starting to react. And then I went and I read the codes for the day and saw what they had to say, and I I acted on them. (laughs) I took the steps that you suggested in the book, and it created a whole different outcome for me. And you could hear this excitement come up. This was actually shared by a woman that was in an event that I just did recently over in Vermont, Maine, at the Pyramid Holistic Wellness Center. And I was there presenting an event and doing a um, meet-and-greet aspect there. And It was so exciting to hear this. She says, you know, this is a wall I've been hitting for so long. But then when I took this advice and I took the suggestion to heart, it completely changed the relationship that she had had with, I think it was her mother-in-law at the time. And so, you know, it really comes down to that aspect of creating our own experiences. And I think a key piece is that people feel very empowered instead of, in a victim space, they feel like they have an opportunity to choose the outcome that they're going to experience. And I think that's, that's a powerful piece we need in our world right now today. Yeah. How empowering is that to be able to really understand that you're making these choices and and moving forward? You know, I'd love for you to share with us what the codes are and, and kind of break that down a little bit so people have a really good understanding of how this all comes together. Yes, and I think this is one of the questions that people ask. It's like, what are the codes? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's it can be challenging sometimes to explain that because on one hand, they're this non-tangible uh, reference, but on another hand, they're, they're a very tangible thing. And the codes, what they are is everything in our world, our existence, ourselves, has a frequency that we operate on. So when we're born, what we're named and the date we're born on and the place we're born in and all of these things have frequencies. If we even just look around the room that we're in and we look at the different shapes, the different colors, the different textiles of things, um, the space, all of these different pieces are all interacting because they're all having a frequency that they, that they function on. So the codes are these different frequencies that are in existence. And So when I go to look at how I get to the codes, um, what I do is I actually oftentimes will work off of names, letters, addresses, um, because every letter tells me a story about the frequency. And then I take that information and instead of going by all the traditional ways of, say, looking at, again, numerology or um, 
letter aspects, I blend in some aspects of, of Nordic knowledge with Nordic lettering and things like that into it. And I take all of those base foundations from the pieces and I kind of send them off to my soul mind to where I come from <laughs> mm-hmm. outside of this earth. And I run it through my understanding um, that I carry with me in the Magi energy. And that's a wisdom based energy that I'm part of and translate it into that language and then retranslate it back out into a language that works to communicate it here. So um, bringing it into these more simple concepts uh, of everything, but basically it's a way, the codes are our frequencies. They are the vibrations that we operate on. And for some people, they think, wow, that's kind of frustrating, isn't it? If I'm at the mercy Mm -hmm. (laughs) of these frequencies or these vibrations that I'm born in. But I, I realize there are different pieces and different ways to work with those frequencies and we have the truth of those frequencies and we have the distortions of those frequencies which show up in a denser dimension like the third world dimension but um when we get down to it the frequencies show us the truth of anything and that truth will resonate in ourselves which is part of what really connects things for people. It's part of what allows them to go, yeah, I may not like the piece of information I'm getting, or this may be a challenging piece that triggers me a little bit, but I'm willing to accept it because I know it's true. And when we get that resonation all the way into ourselves, um, we just kind of surrender in that process, which again, it's another powerful piece because that's the piece that allows us to start to get past things. And how important is that? You know, too often we come against stuff and it's like, oh, I don't like this. And we, you can feel that push against it. I mean, they never said it was going to be easy being here, you know? So it's, it's part of the journey of exploration and learning, you know, when we decide to incarnate on this planet. Very much. It's great. I have this great little thing that I have a story that I'd love to share because I had a client recently that I did a, a personal year report for, and this is this is an example of this very thing. And I sent it off to her, and I, I thought to myself, you know, I know some of this is going to be hard for her <laughs> to hear because it's not going to be what she wants to hear. And that's the thing so many times is we want to hear something. We, we want somebody to hand us that report or get that piece of information for the day that says, hey, everything's going to go great in your day. And then we don't get that. And we kind of feel that little letdown going on. But what it unfolded for, because she really wanted to um, make a move this year. She wanted to shift properties that she's living on. And so she got the report. And it didn't tell her that this was going to be her year to move. Matter of fact, it told her this was her year that she needed to stay put and lay some foundations down. And so when she got that, her first reaction was this anger was coming up. This hurt was coming up. It was, you know, this is not okay. I need to get out of this energy right away and so on and so forth. And Yet she she knew and could feel the truth of the codes in this. And that's what people oftentimes say to me. It's, it's this feeling that I get inside of me that I know it's true. And so she allowed herself to kind of go through the emotions and to experience what was going on and to feel what was happening. And then she stepped back and she said, okay, throw your tantrum, I'm taking command. And she let her soul self come out and take command and say, you know, we're done going down this path, (laughs) basically. And I'm going to put you to bed. You're going to go to bed (laughs) and we're going to wake up tomorrow and we're going to start this all over again. And that's pretty much what she did. But when she woke up in the morning, she felt very calm and very peaceful because the information had been allowed an opportunity to process. She had allowed a communication between her soul energy, her true energy, and between her human mind. And that 
that piece is, is really powerful because the human mind gets locked into, well, I've seen this sign or I've seen that thing, so it's got to be. And not realizing sometimes where there may not be a truth there. But that, that awareness piece is so powerful because it just allows us to surrender into the truth. So the codes are really bringing up this awareness. It's really connecting us with truth. And that's that's a, a huge piece of what they're all about. Uh, it's, it's so important that people understand that they can, you know, there's a way of discerning what that ultimate truth for them is with doing a little work here. And so that has me kind of wondering, it's like, you know, when we're doing our work with the codes, how does that bring us into divine alignment? Great question. And I I love this because what happens is when we're living in our existence here on earth, we get so wrapped up in the human experience and not that it's bad to really immerse and indulge ourselves and all of that. But what happens in that process oftentimes is we get disconnected and we start falling into this illusion that we are no longer that full self and we only see our human self. And so what happens is everything has this truth current, but it oftentimes gets displaced or it gets thrown into a different way of showing itself that starts to create the separation and feeds the separation between our human self and our soul self. So we stop embracing it. Well, since the codes function on sharing the truth with us, they work with natural flows, the natural currents, they're not biased as in this is good and this is bad. It's simply here is where the currents are at. And so they're sharing the truth of the energy that's present free of this judgment. And as we operate with that truth, what they're doing is they're opening the truths of the natural cycles within us. They're opening the truths of what is at hand. It's getting us to Um, focus and to open up our thinking in creative ways and to look beyond just, hey, this is right or wrong, or this is the step I've got to take. But it opens up to really journey, which is an open path. There's no, you have to go this way or that way. It's just, where are you going to take this? And so when you open up the truth, what you're doing is you're automatically establishing divine alignment. You're automatically reconnecting the human and the human mind and the soul self. So you're you're opening this flow of energy that allows you to operate in your own truth. It allows you to operate, you know, as they say, from your soul self, even when you're in this world. So you, you establish a working partnership. And as soon as you do that, establish that working partnership with yourself, you're going to be able to function from that soul self. You're going to be able to allow in the wisdom of your soul self, and that's going to bring you right into divine alignment. Hmm. What a beautiful place that is to be able to get to where people can navigate to their own divine alignment. It's, I think a really wonderful place. And people say, you know what? I still don't always like the things that come up but I'm at peace with them. And and I think that's a big, big key right there is that they feel at peace with what's in, happening. And again, they feel like they have a choice. And I think that's one of the things we feel like we lose so much in this world is that sense of freedom, that sense of choice. It's it, We feel like it's often taken away from us. And so with the way the codes are set up, with the way that I present them in the Code Journey book, It invites people to take those journeys. It invites people to explore the thoughts. It invites people into that space of freedom. And that's really one of the core spaces that we can experience our own power. It's one of the core spaces that we can open up and 
say, oh, yeah, now I'm starting to remember (laughs) what else exists outside of here. Now I'm starting to remember these other pieces. And it does it in such an effortless way through our everyday life. It's not this big, okay, I've got to sit down and meditate for four hours, and then I've got to go and do this activity and that activity and that activity. It really is just an aspect of helping guide people to live in that very, very authentic way. It's giving them that opportunity to understand what is at hand so that they can take advantage of it if they would like to. And move forward with that. Well, and so what can we find out about your coding insights? One of the things I love about the code journey work, the code insights, is it's literally limitless. And there's a lot of layers that go on within this. So at this point, I have not found anything that I I cannot <laughs> um, unfold with it. And that's been exciting because really what it does is it goes in and it allows me, again, to see the interaction. So I can take a look, for example, at how two people will be able to interact with each other. I can take a look and say, okay, if these two people go and get married and one person changes their name in the process of getting married, what will that do to the dynamics of the relationship? Um, It's very much like a recipe. If you change one piece of the dynamic and say you use, you know, rice flour instead of wheat flour, you're going to get a little different component in there. You're changing some of the dynamics a little bit. So we never actually clear our birth energy codes um, because that's something we're born into. Uh, But what we do is we can shift them. So like if we legally change our names, we start to bring in additional layers. We start to bring in other influences and then depending on how long we've been on a certain name or not. Matter of fact, I just had a client that did that recently. She came to me and she said, Hey, I, you know, I had this married name. I've been holding on to it, but I'm really thinking about going back to my maiden name and I'd like to get your take on it, find out whether it's good for me to do that or not. So I sat down and I looked at those components and I looked at what her birth name was and I looked at her married name and said, absolutely. Let's, you know, let's go ahead with this. And I said, I think you should go ahead with this in the timing of your personal year. This is the time to make the transformation. This is the time to make the change. And then I'm working with her on dates to do that. So it can it can guide in these different things. And what we're doing is by selecting certain dates to do things um, personally, it's putting her in the most favorable alignment for that transition or that change, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, I can look at business names. I've done this with people. I've looked at business names. I've reviewed their websites and looked at the names of their products and book titles. And so I've worked with a lot of coaches in that capacity of helping them with their business the right day to release something that's going to give them the most favorable energy to work with, that's going to make their work more receptive uh, to people when they release it. And again, this what this is coming back to is an alignment piece. So literally anything. I remember one year I, I just for the fun of it said, Hey, I wonder if I could, you know, see who's gonna win the World Series. <laughs> and I wonder if I could I wonder if I could see who's gonna win the presidency. And I wonder if I could see who's gonna win, you know, the um Super Bowl. And and there were those three things I took a look at, and all three of them I came out on target with. And people, you know, kind of crosses a little line for some people in some ways because they think, well, you know, isn't this a prediction? (laughs) Are you are you predicting things then when you get into that? And that gets into a, a, a challenging area for some people because especially the people that work very intuitive. Well, you're not supposed to be predicting things. And so I want to say, no, it's not a prediction. (laughs) It's not a prediction. It's simply looking at what the currents are in that point in time. And I think that's one of the really cool things. It's not that 
we are set into something that can't change, but it's looking, I can go anywhere into the future. And, and a friend of mine said that. She goes, it just still blows my mind that you can go out 12 years from now <laughs> on a certain date in a certain place or certain thing and tell us what that em- information or that that influence is going to be like um, for that point in time. And and that's the, the case where, it's, you know, it, it's looking at that those influences that are in there acting at that point in time. So we can certainly know if something's going to be a close call. Uh, you know, it's, again, nothing's absolute, but I can look at whoever's going to have that strongest flow um, in the World Series, for example, uh, whoever's got the more favorable energy is most likely the one to come out winning that series. So it's it's really interesting to delve into because I, I frequently I'll go out on a walk <laughs> or I'll I'll be going someplace to get something and I'm like, okay, well, I wonder what that could do, <laughs> and my head starts running off in this direction of going. Hmm, okay, that's this, that's that. Okay, that gives me this whole bunch of information to work with. So it's a pretty interesting life in my head because there's nothing that I can't code, basically. Well, on that note, we're going to pause here for a quick break. We've been speaking with Jessie on in regards to her new book, The Code Journey. You've been listening to Moments with Marianne. We'll be right back after these messages. Internationally recognized and award-winning author Judy Goodman works and teaches outside the box of limited thinking. Working with people from every walk of life, her goal is to empower you to be the best you can be, no matter what the challenge is. Born with the gift of seeing beyond our normal vision, she has an extraordinary gift of working with every challenge. Teaching beyond conventional wisdom, her work is described as life-changing. Visit JudyGoodman.com. That's JudyGoodman.com. There comes a moment when you realize you're somewhere special, when you discover that each beautiful creature that you see has been rescued from a life of absolute horror and brought to this incredibly free place. Here's where their lives were forever changed and where yours will as well. Discover over 500 tigers, bears, and lions at the brand new visitor center at the Wild Animal Sanctuary just outside Denver. For more information, visit wildanimalsanctuary.org. Discover true freedom at the Wild Animal Sanctuary. Have you ever had the sense that your thoughts might actually be doing something? Ancient secrets of manifesting have been masterfully revealed in the award-winning book Manifesting 123 by Ken Elliott. For the first time, the author's experiences and stories in this book describe exactly how your thoughts can create anything. You've been doing this all your life, but it's never been fully explained for you until now. Visit Manifesting123.com for more information today. Manifesting123.com There are nearly 2 million Americans living with amputation. Many live right here in San Antonio. Becoming an amputee can be scary, frustrating, isolating, but there's no reason to feel alone. The San Antonio Amputee Foundation is here to help support you and guide you toward resources such as home and car modifications and even prosthetic limbs. For more information or to make a donation, visit saamputee.org. We'll help you live a full, active life, one step at a time. San Antonio Amputee Foundation, healing limbs, hearts, and and souls. If not me, then who? This ethos is driving the Travis Manion Foundation to empower veterans and families of fallen heroes to develop character in future generations. In 2007, Marine First Lieutenant Travis Manion was killed in Iraq while saving his wounded teammates. Travis's legacy lives on in the five words he spoke before leaving for his final deployment. If not me, then who? Guided by this mantra, veterans continue their service, developing strong relationships in the community and thrive in their post-military lives. Visit TravisManion.org and ensure the character of our nation's heroes lives on in the next generation. If not me, then who? Welcome back to Moments with Marianne. We're here today with special guest, 
Jesse on Nichols George in regards to her new book, The Code Journey. So on before we left for break, we were talking about your spiritual gifts and how you can use them on a daily basis. Do you ever get people that hit you up or schedule appointments because they want the winning lottery numbers or who's going to win the Super Bowl or those type of questions? <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's definitely a temptation there, but that starts to come back around to uh, pieces, for example, of fortune telling or people wanting you to tell them what their future is going to be like. You know, will this guy be my husband? Is he going to propose to me? Things like this. And this is where some of the layers come in. And one of the things that I've opened up is a a study group, which is free. People can donate if they want to it, but it's free to, to participate that I do twice a month, usually around the new moon and the full moon. And we get into some of these deeper layers so that people can make the personal connections. But those pieces, it's not about pulling numbers out of the air um, in that aspect, and that's not a way that I use this energy. Um, it's more about, you know, what is happening for you on that particular, you know, on a particular day or in a particular place or with a particular person. Um, what are the interactions that are going on? So it's it's not this so much pulling that out. And even when I have gone in and done things like look at the Super Bowl, I, you know, it, it can be a time consuming thing. So I don't do it like at this point, two years out from the election <laughs> mm-hmm. where there's still a hundred candidates sitting out there, you know, that are possibilities. You know, I usually wait and look at what's happening when it gets closer in. And then I look at the relationship of, of who that candidate is with their vice president and how their codes line up with the White House, for example. And then, you know, what is that address of the White House and how do their codes line up as, as that address? And, you know, which presidency is it? Is it, Are they going to be the 47th president or the 52nd president? And, you know, they may not have a coding alignment as the 47th president, but they might have a great coding alignment to be the 52nd president. So, um, sometimes it's a timing factor. And then, you know, even once we look at all of these different pieces, we need to still take consideration and balance it with just some of the good practical pieces, which says that maybe you do have a favorable alignment with somebody and maybe you can be an important shift for them in their life. And that could you know, help them come around. But if they're a person that's operating without integrity, if they're a person that's choosing um, really dangerous, unhealthy choices in their life, just because you're coded to them may not make you want to be around them. So we have to balance some of those things um, along the way. And and I think that's important. And, And that can be Vice versa, I coded for some musical friends that do some great sound healing events and worked with them on coding up some CDs and different things they were doing. And at one point, took a look at their relationship and they had some real tough things in their relationship that showed, you know, great success, but it showed that they were going to be also under fire from people. And they had to learn how to balance their energy and where and when they could work with other people. But really, their codes were designed to not have a bunch of other people involved in their projects, not have, you know, focusing more on what they could do between the two of them. And so they had to really learn how to stand in this united front to deal with the people who wanted to come in and copy them who wanted to come in and try to set those little triggers in motion um, about things and how to stand up to the people that, that wanted to tear down their level of integrity. I have another friend who uh, recently got married. I think it's been almost a year now, actually. Time flies. <laughs> Time mm-hmm. flies in the world of codes. But uh, he came to me and asked, and they had some very rough challenges 
in their code patterns because it actually, they have some code patterns that deal a lot with endings and deal a lot with transformation and energy. And so looking at that, I, I had to, you know, forewarn him, not again predict, but forewarn him that there could be some big challenges with family members passing on or they needed to take extra precautions in travel. So when we have these pieces of information, it gives us, again, that choice to decide, do I want to deal with those challenges? Or to also stay aware that, yes, there's this flow here, but we also don't have control over the choices other people make. And even though we might be a positive influence, they might not be ready to take that favorable energy at this point in time. So as you can see, there's some pretty good <laughs> layers that come into play um, in these pieces. It, it sounds like it all comes together in very interesting and unique ways for each person, individual situation. And so it has me also thinking when we talk about how is it, some of the big topics right now are about reprogramming the brain and how we're, you know, we have all this limiting belief or limiting programming. How does the code um, journey book help us to clear that and kind of restructure our patterns and our thoughts? Definitely. And I think this is one of the really great pieces with the code journey. Uh, It offers us an opportunity to do what oftentimes is referred to as unwinding the brain um, through so much of what we deal with. And, and just look around and think about everything that we have that's electronic, all of the pieces that are emitting the EMFs. And of course, the big hot topic right now is 5G networks coming in and what that's going to be and the, and the progression and how that plays into political arenas and all these other things. Well, we do know that radio frequencies, we do know that the frequencies that are cell phones and the wireless frequencies, and and many people have a lot of wireless stuff around their house and things are coming through. And and we do know that they can send via signals, just like they can send healing tones through music, um, messages, uh, a lot of things in our society are structured to create urgency in us. You got to buy now. You got to do this right away. Um, this is the hot thing. Everybody's doing it. If you don't get it, you're going to be, uh, you know, struggling and challenged and out of the loop and you won't be accepted. And just so these programmings come through and sometimes they're in very subtle ways. Um, like this is the end spot. Everybody's going. Sometimes it's in more obvious ways that are out there. So a lot of times what happens in all this programming, be it through commercials or getting the next best cell phone or the next best technology or this or that, is that we stop thinking for ourselves. And it starts shutting down the brain because the brain just goes, oh, okay, you're going to tell me what to do. So I don't need to think anymore. And so we start accepting this programming and with all the other things We have these subtle frequencies going on all the time. You think of being in an office and all of the office lights that are in there and all the computers that are in those offices and how much, you know, we don't often stop and think about how much of this is coming through and it starts wearing us down physically. So then it becomes easier and easier to take the programming in. We've had a lot of talk about the GMO foods and things like that and how, you know, that's, that's, breaking down our cells and it's breaking down our health and things like that. So the programming becomes easier and easier because we're less and less willing to think for ourselves in a lot of ways. What happens when people start working with the code journey is that it reconnects them with creative thought. It gets their mind open to other possibilities and to not be necessarily just accepting whatever's out there. It gets people to start questioning what is happening in their life to do some reflective work. And what we know is we know that when we start doing this creative work with our brain, when we start asking ourselves questions, when we start 
taking steps that are in alignment with the truth, it starts restructuring our DNA. It starts restructuring our cellular patterns that are in our thought patterns. It starts restructuring the way our brain thinks. So we stop becoming that so-called just absorbing sponge out there and we start redirecting our thoughts into what do I want to create instead of just taking what somebody's giving us. We start working in this pattern of looking at what is really happening in our life. It also becomes a very powerful tool in helping us to learn things like observation and rest and when to rest and when to move. And a friend of mine, um, Lorraine Cohen, she she comes to me and she goes, what? I got to rest again? <laughs> but in this process that I, I worked with her a lot in, you know, this period of where she's had to honor a lot of things for her health, a lot of things for herself, and it becomes a very trusting process. And in that process of rest and trust for her, she has unlocked an amazing amount of creativity that has opened her up to a lot of business opportunities that she never thought about. It opened her to get creative with what she was doing and to start to create, again, this flow of energy, this connection with her soul self. So what it's doing is it's really giving us when we take these steps and when we allow ourselves to take in this information and to to open the mind up, it's getting us to look around. It's getting us to become observant. It's getting us to not just accept that programming that's coming in. So it actually starts to take that programming out of our brains and it allows us to choose the programming that we're going to put in. And as we know where our thoughts are, the programs that we're running on is going to create the experiences that we have in life. So just even opening this brain up, and it doesn't have to be some elaborate big process. Matter of fact, I like to say, just take it and simplify it down and and just take some of these really simple basic steps, like just go for a walk and see what comes to you, or just take some time out to just honor that rest and see where you feel tomorrow. And these simplest steps can be life-changing, can be absolutely life-changing. And that's one of the things Lorraine found was she found that it was changing her health. It was changing the way that she opened up to working with herself. And it changed what she was producing and the frequencies that she was operating on so that she could offer a very strong, beautiful vibration through her work. Hmm. So if we're to break it down, how do the codes work? So if we break it down, when we look at how the codes work, what it's going to do is I am going to, again, start with that name. I'm going to break it down into a piece of information. I'm going to, you know, run it through. I'm going to look at that and say, okay, I see what the patterns are, the frequencies are that is going on for this person. Um, I see how these different interactions are going to happen for them. And then I'm going to run that through all of these <laughs> different resources of my, my wealth of information. And, and some of that is very, very intuitive work. And it's going to come back in and it's going to open up. And I'm going to be able to share a piece of information with them that is going to open into their heart and they're going to feel it in the cells, and it's going to offer them the opportunity to say, okay, I'm ready to live in this really authentic life. I'm ready to step in and start commanding my own life now instead of allowing other people to do it for me. And the Code Journey book has been really amazing in this process because it really doesn't matter where somebody is on their path. It doesn't matter if somebody is just exploring possibilities, if they already have a foundation of faith or spiritual practice, 
that they work with or if they've been on their path for decades. It doesn't really matter where they are because it's connecting them with that truth that opens up. So it it opens it up in a way that's very, very accessible. And what it is is it balances the soul processes with what is tangible and realistic for the human self to take. And I like to refer to that as practical spirituality, which is, I've just come to love that term Mm -hmm. because so many times the spiritual processes feel so out of reach for us. It's like the foundation of my work being in compassion. And so the, the codes are connecting us with that compassion itself. And people look at compassion and go, that's so far out of my reach. You know, isn't that for like gurus and monks and mm-hmm. <laughs> people that just live in that 24 seven. And so, you know, here again, it's opening these little threads through common grounds in connections. And so when we open it up again, it doesn't matter. And I've, I've heard people say this, like, oh, I had your book. It was laying on my coffee table and my girlfriend picked it up and she's like, what's this? Or, you know, my, my mother, who's a minister, <laughs> you're telling me she's working with this book and she's loving it and she takes the steps because the steps, what we find is when you're sharing the truth, it doesn't matter what your belief system is or how much work you've done on yourself in your life the truth resonates. And so the codes work because they're connecting you with that truth. What they do is they help you find a natural flow in your life. And um, I had a, a client that said this to me. She said, what I'm finding is the more I take the steps with the codes, the more I do what's in your code journey book, the more my choices are in natural alignment with what is healthy for me. Hmm. So she's finding that actually because of how this subtle program is working with the codes, that the more and more and more that she works with them, and this isn't like, hey, you have to work with them or your life is going to fall apart. These are basic everyday steps that are tangible that we, we, you know, because you can integrate them in that everyday life piece, like operating with integrity or no people are not in the best frame of mind. So things might get said that may feel hurtful, but they're not really directed at you today. So when we go into a day with that awareness and we do that day after day going in aware and paying attention, we automatically start shifting the whole currencies that we're drawing into ourselves. And when we honor our steps and we don't get wrapped up in everybody else's drama and the codes help us stay out of those drama situations. So by just being aware that that could come up today and then knowing how to deal with that, giving some practical steps of, okay, if people start getting really reactive, this may not be your day to speak up. This may be your day that you need to step away from everything. On another day, it might be the perfect day to speak up and and put your voice out there. Um, instead of stepping away from things. So as you do that, you're natural, you're aligning with nature's flow. You're aligning with the natural, natural current. And the more that we are doing that, then the more that natural flow comes to be. And it's very exciting for people. They get very excited when they go, oh, I picked it naturally. <laughs> I picked it naturally. And then I checked with you and look at what happened. Um, I, I know that I have one client, um, connection in Denmark. And one of the things that she'll do is she'll look at it the day, the night before the next day so that it can work through her dream state. And like everybody works with it in these really cool different ways. And and it, then that filtrates in her dream state and then she can get whatever in through that. I have some clients that like to to look at it every morning before they start their day. And they'll sit down and have a cup of tea or whatever and and look over the coach for the day. I have other people that just kind of go in this free flow. And sometimes they like to look at it at the end of the day so that they can get the affirmation Mm -hmm. (laughs) that they were in that natural flow throughout the day, which is really fun. So I think that's the thing is once we start to feel the flow, we start to realize 
how different it is. And so again, the coats also, you know, that big piece of it, it puts us into a working relationship with ourselves. It puts us into a harmonious relationship with ourselves and our environment. So when we look at the codes, is there anything that someone cannot explore with them? Yeah, you know, really, again, this is a limitless piece. Um, and, and I'd like to, to express that because we really can explore anything. I mean, I can look at connections for angels. I can look at life patterns. I can look at relationships and the dynamics there. I can look at business names. I can look at whether a company will be good for somebody. I can look at locations and find out if certain locations are going to be in flow for them or not be in flow for them. Um, I can look at different uh, color patterns and it's really limitless in that sense. Um, Really the only thing that, and and it's, it's a choice is I don't get into that prediction aspect. I don't get into telling you, what your life is going to be about because the codes are about giving you choices and bringing up awareness of what you're working with. So it's not that necessarily somebody has been dealt with more favorable or less favorable influences in their life, even though that kind of feels like that. It comes down to understanding how to work with the currents you are. You know, if you, you know, if a lion is a lion, they don't go out and try to be a skunk, (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know, if a skunk is a skunk, they may look at it and say, well, why can't I be a lion? But what they really need to do is to learn how to work with their skunk body and realize their own gifts within that. And, and I think that's really a, a valuable piece that the codes teach us is how to work with what we have, how to work with, creating from what we have because we're all as you know Marianne we all have these beautiful gifts in us we all have these natural talents that are a part of us we all have those things that our heart draws to and when we honor those things within us when we honor our own natural abilities that's where our gifts to the world come from That's where we really tap into what we have to share. And that's where we start to feel really, really alive. So there's there's no real limitations. I just don't get into telling people what their fortune or their destiny is in life. It's 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 just an awareness, really. So if someone wants to work with the codes, how do they go about doing that? So there's there's a couple of different ways, um, as I expressed, and I have mm-hmm. clients that are in all different ages and ranges and backgrounds and places all over the world. So one of the simplest ways and most accessible ways for people is through the Code Journey book. Um, that can be purchased through Amazon. That can be purchased through Smashwords. I've got a discounted rate on the ebook through Smashwords. It can um, they can get it through Kindle. So that's an option. And I put out a new book every year. So each year, um, you know, like there's the Code Journey influences for there was for 2018 was the first year I put it out. We have the current one for 2019. Um, 2020 is is in motion <laughs> right now, so that will be getting released around the fall. So every year there's a new one that comes out, and that's a really great, just easy step for people to take. Um, I make posts online, as you know, that's part of how we connected was through sharing the post. And so if people aren't sure if they like the book or that's something, they'll find monthly posts around the new moon cycles, the full moon energies, um, monthly energies, which they can kind of take a look at and see if that's working for them. And then they can also jump into um, the, the study sessions that are happening twice a month. And then I also do things like personal year reports, which are really, really valuable for people. Um, that's been a huge piece of understanding. And, and those, those are a more customized, more personalized look at your individual year month to month. 
So for people who want to go in a little bit more in depth with those layers, they can do that. And then I can also work with people. Maybe they're going to release a book. I've been working with a client um, that is in the process of having a book published right now and working with her on finding symbols and signs and pictures that are coded up favorably for her colors that are favorably coded for her, for her website, fonts, prints, things like that. So, um, which is really cool because what I find is when somebody works with, say, like a marketing person or they're working with um, somebody who is branding their image, things like that, and then they bring the codes in complementary to that, then it's really powerful for them. They get like, it just magnifies the great results that they can get. Um, in all of that work and really maximize the the benefits that they can get out of it. And so that's another option. I can work with them on that professional level um, in there. So there's a lot of ways to access the codes and to to come into starting to work with them, depending on what is comfortable with somebody. And that, that's where I say start with what is comfortable. And I think Another piece that I absolutely love about the codes is that you can use it with any other modality that you're doing in your life. It's not going to interfere with other things, you know, if you're doing healing work or transmission work or yoga or whatever else you're choosing to do as part of your journey and your path, the codes are complementary to whatever Mm -hmm. other modalities you choose to work with. How do you see the codes having a global impact? Well, this is my mastermind. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to it's going to have a global impact because many people say I feel helpless to change the world. Like I want to go out and change the world, but I feel really helpless to do that. And so through Working on the individual self, and that's why I always bring them back. Work on yourself because when you change yourself, when you take the steps to improve your own life, put your own self in flow, other people will join in on that with it. And it's making the codes tangible. So simply by helping people shift into their own power, shift into their own alignment, giving them a tool and a resource through the Code Journey book to do that, that will start changing our world because it's going to change the collective vibration that we are functioning on. As we each start to wake up and move out of that programming that has infiltrated the human mind and to reestablish that relationship connection between the human and the soul self, it is going to be changing our world because people are going to be standing up saying, yeah, this isn't acceptable. I'm <laughs> sorry to take your GMOs <laughs> someplace else. This yeah. isn't going to work. We're not doing that anymore because they're going to realize they're not the victim they've been programmed to be. And they're going to start operating and placing more and more integrity. And this is one of the things that's come up. We we had that shift that started back in March, actually, and it'll be running for several years, but we're heralding in a new generation of starseed grouping right now who is going to be very integrity focused and they're going to be very serious about having a life again and not just working three or four jobs to pay for some place to live. And they're not going to accept mistreatment. They're not going to accept um, disrespect. And so uh, when we look at this, we're going to need to be fostering this energy as it comes into the world. So with each person that steps onto the code journey and honors their own path, they will be activating change in the world. They will be activating it on a global level. And that is going to infiltrate because as we each stand for that integrity, those that are trying to command and direct and control that control is going to dissolve and they're going to have to shift over to our choices. Well, gosh, we can talk on this all day on where can people, you know, because there's like so much in this, the code journey is such a, just a very thorough uh, resource for people. And as well as the information that you have, 
where can people connect with you and be part of your community? Absolutely. I, you know, I'm on Facebook. They can send me a message through there. They can send me a message through LinkedIn. Those are usually the two social media channels I'm on the most. Um, They can send me an email, which is jang, J-A-N-G, at CompassionCodes.com. My website is CompassionCodes.com, so they can go and take a look uh, on that that aspect of there and see if they just want to check out some of the things I've been involved in and that I have up. Um, so those are probably the easiest ways for people to connect with me. Uh, again, the book is on Amazon. They can look it up there and, um, and check that out and, and pick up a copy from there. And um, very, very open. So it's, it's not hard to get hold of me. I'm usually pretty good about getting back to people quickly. So and getting connected with them. Well, on thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show with us here today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Well, on it's been such a pleasure to spend this time with you and of course to talk about your new book, The Code Journey. Again, if you'd like to connect with Jesse on, you can at her website compassioncodes.com. Well, we're at the end of our time today. I would like to thank everyone for tuning in. You're listening to Moments with Marianne. And remember, make every moment count. In a single moment, your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Her guests are leaders in their fields, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, and business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary, a recognized leader in her own work. And while teaching others to develop, refocus, and grow, Marianne will bring the best guest and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. You never know just which moment will change your life forever. Moments with Marianne airs every Sunday, Monday, Thursday, and Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific time. Make sure to tune in and visit momentswithmarianne.com for more information.